In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to find the midpoint of line segments. We've already found what the lengths are, but now we want to find the midpoint. And if you remember, the midpoint is the point located in the middle. So my first question is, what's the midpoint of this orange line segment? Or what's the midpoint of segment EF? And since I'm talking about the segment, I put a little line over the, or the segment symbol over the top of it. Um, because I'm talking about it, not the length. So E is at the point negative 3, 0. And F is at the point, again, if you're counting these, this would be a negative 1, 0. Here's 0, 0. Here's positive 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0. So F is at the point 5, 0. So I want to know what's in the middle of E and F. Where is the midpoint? One of the most basic methods that you learned when you were in maybe third grade was to sort of put your fingers at the endpoints and move them until you came to the center. So if I go from 5 to 4, that's one point. If I go from negative 3 to 2, that's 1. Then I go from 3, that's over 1 more. Then negative 1 over 1 more. 2 is over 1. 0 is over 1. And I find that my midpoint should be at... 1, 0. So here's where my midpoint would be, and that's using that sort of finger method, as I would call it. Here's the middle point. Now, as we work on our math, we want to find sort of a more systematic way of figuring out where the midpoint is. So we know that the midpoint, again, is the middle point. And when we were asked to find the middle of things, we have sometimes been asked to find the average of things. So when you're asked to find the average, for example, the average of your test scores, you would add up all your test scores and divide by how many tests you took, and that would give you the average of your test scores. Well, a midpoint is sort of the same thing. It's the average location of where E and F are located. So if we're going to add up the if we're going to find an average, we're going to kind of do it the same way. And I'm just going to use some letters first. I'm going to say take point E and add it to point F. And because there's two points, we're going to divide by two. And that's going to give you your midpoint. Now that's just sort of the generic sense. And it has no really mathematical, um, nobody would notice that as a mathematical equation in terms of a general sense. So we want to turn that into something that has numbers. So, for example, from E to F, it's only changing horizontally. There's no vertical change because we're still at a 0 and a 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the x value, negative 3. We're going to add it to 5, and we're going to find its average. Because there are two numbers, we're going to divide by 2. Negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2. Again, we're dividing by 2 because there's two numbers. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so that's, again, how we found the midpoint is by finding the average of the two numbers. Now, you can use the finger method any time that you want, but the finger method doesn't always work if you're not given an actual number line. So let's look at example two. Here's an example of where a number line is not given. It's just giving you two endpoints. And they want to know, well, where's the middle of this line segment? So whenever they ask you for the midpoint, you want to think about, I want to find the average of the two points. The average location, maybe I want to say, location of the two points. So I want to find the average x location first. So I want to know where is that midpoint. So just like any other average, you take the two numbers, the 4 plus the 10. And since there's two numbers, you divide by 2. So that's 14 divided by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So in the middle here, if I would call this my midpoint, and usually they use the letter M, but we'll just write midpoint, this would be the value of 7. Now, because it's a horizontal line, our Y value for each of these is not changing. So we automatically know this should also be 0. You could also show it as an average, 0 plus 0, 
divided by 2 because there's two zeros. Well, 0 divided by 2, anytime you divide 0 by 2, it's 0. So we knew again that that was our average for our y values. So whenever you find midpoint, you're just averaging the two numbers. Okay, let's look at our third example. Our third example is a vertical line. It asks us again to find the midpoint. I'm going to write it again. That is the average location of the points. So and you should notice that this is a 0 and a 0. So the average of 0 plus 0 is still 0. The average of 5 and 1 is, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my midpoint would be 0, 3. It's the average location of the points. So now that we've located our midpoint at 0, 3, I just want to talk about some notation that you may or may or not have seen. When you look at the distance from D to the midpoint, from 5 to 3 or 3 to 5, this length would be a length of 2, right? The distance or length is 2 units. And if you look at this distance or length from 3 down to 1 or 1 up to 3, that distance is also 2. When segments have equal lengths, when 2 equals 2, and if I talk about segment D, and I'm going to call this again M for midpoint, if DM, I'm sorry, if the length of DM is equal to the length of ME, which it is, 2 and 2 are equal, we say that those two things are congruent. Congruent means that the shapes, in this case, the segments are equal. Equal length, equal size, equal everything. And the way that we write that notationally is we would say segment DM, notice the symbol over the top, is congruent. Now it's an equal sign with a tilde kind of thing over the top, is congruent to ME. So notationally, this is how you show something is congruent. And to show something is congruent on the picture, they mark it with just a little hash mark. And if they have matching hash marks, oops, then you know they are congruent. So DM is congruent to ME, and they're marked with those little hash marks. If I go back up to the second example, um, B, and I'm going to call this M. BM in this example, from 4 to 7, is length 3. And M to C from 7 to 10 is length 3. So BM, segment BM, is congruent to segment MC. And so they would mark this with some hash marks. Since these are length 3, I marked them differently than the ones that are length 2 because they're not, 2 and 3 are not the same, so they have to have different markings, but they show the parts that are the same. Okay, so I want to show you one last example in regards to midpoint and using the congruent symbol. This is something you may have seen on Alex. So again, we want to find the midpoint, and again, that's the average location of the points. So if A, I'm going to write down here, is negative 6, negative 4, and B is negative 2, 2, you're going to think of this as two problems. You're first going to figure out horizontally, where are those, where's the midpoint? So if I kind of drew this down to the line and drew this one up to the line, where is the middle between those two values? This would be negative 6 and this would be negative 2. So those are our x values. So to find the middle, to find that midpoint, you're going to figure out the average. So you would do negative 6 plus negative 2 and since there's two numbers, you divide by 2. So negative 8 divided by 2. So negative 4 should be my midpoint. Okay, so I found the midpoint for the x value. My midpoint m is negative 4, comma. Now I have to find the y values. So I'm going to erase this. The y values, I'm going to draw to the y-axis. 
and this is at positive 2 and this one is at negative 4. So I'm going to find the average between those two. So I'm going to add them together, positive 2 plus a negative 4 divided by 2. So that would give me negative 2 over 2. That would give me negative 1. So I'm right about there. So my midpoint location, if now I put that actually all together, the midpoint of AB, you know, is somewhere right here visually, but that would be the point negative 4, negative 1. By finding the average of each, midpoint means find the average location. And again, how do you find average? You add up the values and divide by how many there are. We found that our midpoint is negative 4, negative 1.